Wednesday night, the people of God come together. And every Wednesday night, we're loving our King more than ever. It's an hour with Jesus, how it will please us if His glory falls down again. So lift up your voice. what's going to happen until you hit the live button and you realize that there was no stream key uh, already set. So we started scrambling and I've got so much in my brain right now with the new CD and the traveling that's been happening and this, that, and the other. I could not recall a year and a half ago how I used to build the stream for YouTube. Um, we're not on Facebook tonight because we're not we're not in that particular platform. Uh, we will be back there next week, so no worries about that. But um, it took me about 15 minutes to unscramble my brain. On top of that, YouTube has changed a lot since the last time I did that. They no longer have the same setup page, so I was really shooting from the hip trying to find all kinds of things I had no business looking for because <laughs> it's not in here. <laughs> But you're here, and thanks for hanging with us. Those of you that are watching this program later, you're, you've missed all of that uh, blank page excitement. But uh, I'm glad you're here now. We're here to worship the Lord. Uh, quick update. The CD is still coming right along. I'm going to spend many days in Nashville next week streaming, uh, excuse me, <laughs> mixing the CD and recording some some beautiful choral voices, but um, uh, I will make sure there's a fresh uh, hour with Jesus on Wednesday night for you, uh, pre-recorded ahead of time so that you guys can continue to worship the King every week so faithfully like you do. A few minutes ago, I told this, I don't think we're going to have a program tonight, and then I saw something that I had not seen in the many minutes of hurried going from screen to screen, trying to locate the problem. So we're here, and uh, I'm so very thankful for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well. So 
someone will come to show the way. I believe I believe above the smallest storm the prayer will still be heard and I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every word of God through your blood and I cling to that old rugged cross tonight Lord I welcome your blood being poured out over my life Lord over the life of my family my wife Lord and all these precious worshipers who are tuning in to spend an hour with you Pour your blood over them tonight, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that which we know about and that which we don't. Sins of commission and sins of omission. 
They're all over the place all the time, Lord. Wash us clean as your bride. Mm. Hallelujah. Just returned from New York City over the weekend where I participated in an event that I've done, I believe, 17 times now over the last probably 19 years. Only missed a couple. I've sung this song so many times there over the city. This is the time True worshipers will worship Him. These are the days when my Father's way Your name 
you in spirit and in truth, Lord, from coast to coast and around the world. We just don't sing words. We worship you with our spirit man in the truth of who we are and the truth of who you are. Help us to grow, Lord, in avenues of worship. Hallelujah. Well, peaceful, good time to play a quiet place.
song. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We lift our hands and bow our knees and worship at your throne. Cause we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. Do you need him tonight? Let him know it. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, right now. We lift our hands and bow our knees. financial provision some a miracle that I know nothing about you know all about it you are the great provider that's why we call you Jehovah Jireh it's one of your names would you provide tonight Lord some have been asking for weeks, some for days, some for years, some for decades. I don't understand your ways. But 
God, I ask fresh and anew tonight. We lift our hands and we bow our knee and worship at your throne. Pour out healings right now in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, by your goodness, Lord. You heal all of our diseases.
Great song. Great song. Reminds me of He paid a debt He did not owe I owed a debt I could not pay I needed someone to wash my sin away. And now I see a brand new song, amazing grace. Sometimes I miss my grand piano, which is downstairs in this house. I'm grateful for the sound that comes out of these two machines. This is actually playing the grand piano that you hear. This is providing the electric Rhodes kind of a piano that you hear. But I miss the beautiful sound when I sit down at my grand and just just have a little time of, of sharing love with, with the Lord. I really do miss that. So maybe one night we'll bring you all down there, which would be an absolute technical nightmare. It's not going to happen, let me just tell you. We have trouble getting it going in here. <laughs> oh. Um, I forgot what I was going to say about where I was just going. Miss Liz, once again, faithfully behind the controls. Um, this morning, when I was not able to sleep early, early in the morning, we're talking, I have sleep challenges. Probably uh, 5 a.m., 4 a.m., I'd been up for a couple of hours. I sleep in shifts, okay? <laughs> Don't be like me. <laughs> um, I was watching the memorial celebration of uh, a large church pastor here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area named Ricky Tejada. And um, it's a three-hour celebration of his life he died just uh about eight or nine years eight or nine days ago of 
complications from COVID and um, things just really went bad in a hurry. And thousands of people were praying for him, including Liz and me. I had only met him a couple of times. He and I were actually going to have lunch together way back in February, the exact week that the awful hundred year storm hit Texas. And so we were not able to go out and uh, get better acquainted at that time. Um, I wish I'd gotten to know him, especially now that he's been taken to heaven. And you know, I listened to the founding pastor shed tears as he was not understanding everything. And he's a brilliant man of the word. He's a brilliant man of the spirit. God has used him founding that church so many years ago. And he handed that over to Ricky just a year ago, a year ago this month, I believe. And um, to hear the different ones come forward and just share about this wonderful man who just went to that church when he was... I think in his early 20s and went up to the pastor's wife and said my name is Ricky Tejada and I'm here to serve and that was the beginning of a long 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 relationship and he went through the tragic loss of a wife who got uh, killed in a drunken car accident hit by a drunk driver and God a few years ago several years ago I don't know the whole story but restored a new wife to him which uh, is a beautiful lady, beautiful woman of God. And she's really dealing with this, as you can imagine. Ricky was, I think, 57 years old, not quite 58 yet. And so, you know, you scratch your head and you say, why? And um, I can only point to Deuteronomy 29, 29. Because we are a people of faith. I'm a man of faith. I believe the word of God is true. Deuteronomy 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may all do the words of this law. So there are these mysteries that even your best faith, there were thousands and thousands of people throughout the country and probably the world praying for Ricky's miraculous healing. And it, it would have taken a miracle. He had a couple of strokes after he was admitted to the hospital. His lungs shut down, his kidneys shut down, and he, he expired shortly thereafter. But the secret things, those that you and I, for some reason, are not privy to knowing. Do you understand that the all-wise God knows why he can't reveal the secret things to you and me? I so wish that he could. You've heard me talk about uh, my friend, a gal that sang on one of my CDs as a backup singer, Lauren Kuhn, just a a couple of years ago, left the earth at the age of 31, a beautiful woman of God, worship leader, mother of four children under the age of 10, wonderful husband. And I could try to figure this out uh, for the rest of my days, and I'm not going to do it. Personally, I believe we are still missing a key in the kingdom of God on people who are taken from the earth before what seems like would be their time. I have no argument with older people dying. It's going to happen. When somebody's taken at that age, or as Brother Ricky was this last week, I don't understand. They're the secret things that God just does not reveal. But do you suppose God doesn't understand? I think He does. And I guess I just pray, you know, I pray, Father, 
If we're missing any tools to your kingdom, those keys that you handed to Peter and say, I give you the keys of the kingdom. If we're missing something there, enlighten us. Take the body of Christ to a higher place so that we can feel more of a demonstration of what you said when you said to the disciples, heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. Reveal your plan to us. Show us your ways. You know, I had a crazy thought. This is really straying, but when I was a kid, maybe 13 years old, I had a brand new silver dollar. And I was out with my friend with my silver dollar in my pocket, and I said, this will be fun. You go way down the street, and I'm going to roll the silver dollar, and let's see how far it goes. Let's see if it makes it to you and so he went down probably I'm guessing a hundred yards if you are around the world that's probably a hundred and no it's probably like 160 kilometers or something like that 140 kilometers something like that that's not right <laughs> forget that all right that's miles <laughs> I'm in another world all right. He went way down the street, all right? And I got a big wind-up, and I let that silver dollar go, and it took off. And I mean, it was a thing of beauty. And it went and went, and it came to my buddy Reggie, and he just turned because he didn't want to stop it. He thought, I'll just watch it from here until it goes off the road. And he, he turned around, and down it went. And I mean... It even kind of went around the corner and kept going. And suddenly, Reggie and I are running as fast as we can. And someplace it stopped, and we started looking. But we did not have a clue. Now, Wisdom would have said, tell Reggie, who's two years younger than you, to stop the silver dollar when it gets there. But he didn't. But we looked, and we looked, and we looked, until nightfall, probably an hour and a half finally gave up and I never saw my silver dollar again you know back in 1968 a silver dollar is pretty special <laughs> I wouldn't mind having it right now actually never found it and I thought that I would because I was so determined fast forward with me now in this little bit weird story my dad and I are outside our house throwing the frisbee all right. His wedding ring is loose on his finger. He goes and he throws the frisbee across the yard to me and off flies the ring into this six foot thick hedge of bushes someplace. And he goes, uh oh, I just lost my ring. I said, you're kidding. He said, no, I, it just flew right off my hand. And so we begin to look and look and look and look, and look, and look. I don't know how long we're out there. Finally, nightfall is coming. The sun is setting, and Dad said, that's it. Let's forget it. And I said, well, all right. I might look another minute or two. And he goes in, sits down on the couch, watches TV. <laughs> Within five minutes, as the sun was setting, Something took me to the very base of one of those hedges, one of those bushes, and there was that shiny yellow gold plain wedding band. I picked it up, I put it on my finger, one that it would fit, went in and sat down on the couch next to my dad and, and put that hand on his, on his knee and I said, Hey, I love you, Mac. I always called him Mac. He called me Mac. I called him Mac. It was a little thing that we did. He said, I love you too, Terry. And he pats my hand and he looks down and sees that ring. He goes, oh my goodness. I said, I just found it. I don't even know how. I asked the Holy Spirit to help me and I think he took me right to it. Now, 
some of you are watching this and maybe you know of somebody or maybe you yourself have gone through a thing where you lost a diamond, uh, a ring, a wedding ring. And you go, well, yeah, God is faithful, right? Yes, he is. Well, then why didn't I find my ring? I don't know. You know what? The secret things belong to God. Maybe uh, finding and recovering a wedding ring to my father meant something entirely different than you finding your ring or your friend finding their ring or somebody who dropped their wallet in a lake or lost something else very valuable and never got it back. If you go there, you're judging and you can't judge. So you just let it go. The secret things belong to God. I didn't find my silver dollar. That was more out of foolishness and stupidity than anything. Don't throw a round thing down a flat road for a long, long distance, especially downhill, which it was. <laughs> you know what? A couple of years later, I was at a football game and I left the stands. I was in the pet band. I left the stands to go to the restroom. And on the ground was a dollar bill. Pretty big deal again for me. Picked it up and put it in my pocket and went, wow. Now, we crazy old Maddox might have said, that's God restoring the lost coin. Well, I don't know about that. But it's funny because he wants to bless us and he loves to restore things to us. And as I'm in the bathroom, I said, wouldn't it be wild if I walked back out and there was another dollar bill on the ground and I walked back out and there was another dollar bill on the ground? I don't know. The secret things belong to God. and We've got to keep our minds off of it. You know, Liz's favorite question. If God knew Satan was going to fail and destroy all this mankind and bring all this sin and evil into the earth, why didn't he just kill him in heaven? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she says, why do you always say I don't know to all those important questions? And I go, I don't know. All I know is the secret things belong to God. I don't know if this has meant anything to you. I, I wish that I knew why Pastor Ricky left the earth and that church with a fresh vision that he had for that new, that new pastoral position. But God knows. And God's a redeemer and a restorer. So watch what he does. Even though our hearts grieve because we lost a humble servant who looked like there was just no guile about this guy. He just loved people. If you'd have heard these testimonies, person after person who said, I was his best friend. The next person would come up and go, no, no, I was his best friend. We used to meet for lunch every month. Next guy would come up, I was his best friend. It became comical watching this. But that's how Ricky was to everybody. He was their best friend. And oh, don't we need more like that. Maybe God will replace him with three or four Ricky-type people. It was just wonderful to hear a life that left the earth too soon, but a life well lived. And so we pray for his wife and those boys of theirs who I believe are teenagers, that they would uh, experience great peace during this time and that the God of all wisdom would continue to grow us in the knowledge of our faith and would continue to reveal to us the mysteries of heaven. You know, he told me many, many years ago, he said, I will only reveal my mysteries when you come in to that holy of holy places and sit at my feet when it's just you and me communing. There I will reveal my mysteries to you. And so many of us don't want to take the time, me included, to go in there and to be so vulnerable before the king of the earth, the creator of the universe. But he invites us in, and we are invited in because of what Jesus has already accomplished at the cross. Praise God.
in the night or of the arrows that fly in the day God has given angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways so remember always keep tonight by something that's happened during the last hour. I hope you've been with Jesus. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And until we meet again next Wednesday night here, bye-bye for now. <laughs>